Imagine for a moment that a mad scientist has created a time machine and forces you to choose a random period to travel to. You think about it very carefully because you know you have many options and a bad decision could lead to a truly unfortunate end. However, no matter what you do, you should never move through the dimensions of time, specifically 150 million years ago. So pay close attention because today we will reveal which is the worst period in history to travel back to. But before we start, I want to invite you to stay until the end if you want to receive a surprise and also see the best content only on this channel. This was a time when instant death was present in almost every corner, as there existed a class of imposing and deadly dinosaurs that ruled with an iron fist what we know as planet Earth. However, even by dinosaur standards, the dinos that lived at that time were especially terrifying. Certain paleontologists have claimed that this period was a golden age for giant theropods, lovers of both meat and greenery. And indeed, 150 million years ago, the oceans, the the land and the skies hid many secrets that were, let's say, hostile to human life. So welcome to the late Jurassic, geography. This time not even a map would help you, no matter how good the Earth's land masses were, which were quite unrecognizable compared to their current versions with North America. However, the familiarity with the shape ends here. In the south, there was a giant mass of fused continents that together formed what some might consider the last supercontinent, Gondwana. This ancient land mass was composed of South America, the Arabian Peninsula, India, Antarctica, and Australia, creating the largest continent of the late Jurassic, covering almost one-sixth of the Earth's surface. And from space, it would have appeared as a surprisingly massive landmass, thus forming the oldest and largest continent in human history. With this title, let's comment a bit about the Asian continent of that time. Being a giant continent in its own right, formed by present-day Europe, Greenland, and parts of Asia, evidently different from the rest of the Earth. It was absolutely covered by expansive of waters that were largely isolated from the land, resulting in the smallest countries we know today and composed of numerous islands. Europe, in particular, was an island paradise that bore almost no resemblance to today's Europe. Its location was quite different, as it was closer to what is now the northern United States, while China was right next to Iran and Turkey. Similarly, they were extremely far from India. It may sound confusing, but we must understand that geography was quite strange when trying to locate and define the land at that time. Fortunately, albeit late, Jurassic oceanography can shed some light on understanding a bit more. It is important to mention that only two major bodies of water existed, the Pacific Ocean and the Tethys Ocean. The Tethys was already an ancient ocean, having existed for over a hundred million years. It was able to cover the Eastern Hemisphere and would have experienced significant tectonic activities that would have raised it, resulting in a sea level rise that submerged much of Asia. Despite receiving this tectonic boost, it is necessary to remember that the Pacific Ocean was about 50 million years old, formerly dominating the entire Western Hemisphere and would continue to expand over time. Birth of the Atlantic in the past, specifically in the late Jurassic, another larger body of water also emerged, what we all know as the Atlantic Ocean. Although at that time it seemed more like a sea, it was practically surrounded by land. The temperatures of the Atlantic were also different, today being notably hotter than before. The trend we can observe worldwide regarding seawater is that it has an average of 32 point 10 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, making it 25% hotter than the current average. Even in the deepest areas of the Pacific, temperatures were still warmer, reaching about 17 degrees Celsius or 63 degrees Fahrenheit, similar to tap water. This elevated temperature is often attributed to tectonic uplift and the Earth's internal heat, which would eventually lead to some peculiar events. The largest volcano of all time. All of this would lead to the erection of very active volcanoes spewing enormous amounts of CO2 into the water. Currently, paleontologists are aware of some of these extinct volcanoes, one of which is the Tamu Massif, considered by some to be the largest volcano on Earth. This absolute unit is located 1,600 kilometers or 990 miles east of Japan and covers the seabed spanning the state of California. On the other hand, it is almost twice as high as Mount St. Helens. During its active life, the Tamu Massif would have made the oceans more acidic, warming the atmosphere, which creates warmer conditions on land, climate, and biomass. In fact, 150 million years ago was likely the warmest period in the entire Jurassic, with an average daily temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. This heat indicates that the Earth was experiencing climatic conditions it hadn't seen in nearly 50 million years, with both hemispheres north and south witnessing significant amounts of drought. On the other hand, biomes, including deserts and 
different savannas could have had a significant impact on animals, considering that most also had different dry seasons where severe droughts occurred. It's not unheard of to think this, as towards the equator, things became a bit less fierce, as drier ecosystems gave way to the spread of tropical forests that covered the vast majority of northern Africa. However, the milder conditions were not found there, but rather near and within the polar regions. Since then, conditions were not brutally cold tundras, but rather temperate biomes similar to modern Central Europe. The polar region areas were much warmer at that time and didn't even have ice caps or glaciers. As a result, life was absolutely abundant, even in the harshest climates. If you're enjoying the video, support us with your like. It helps us bring more quality content like this. Subscribe to our channel and activate the bell. The golden age of dinosaurs' life at the equator still found a possible path with the formation of rich, wild areas full of springs with beautiful ecosystems. Dinosaurs in particular thrived and enjoyed a level of diversification never seen before. Theropods and armored dinosaurs were the best established, with multiple species of each group living far and wide across the Earth's surface. They were often found within a unique ecosystem that occasionally resulted in existential chaos, rarely seen during the Mesozoic, where some species species competed to see which was dominant. On the other hand, Morris's information indicated that the expansive Northern American biosphere had incredible reach, extending through 13 states, as it was composed of arid savannas and forests. So far, it's known that more than 40 dinosaurs resided there, including at least 10 different theropods, where almost all were large enough to hunt human-sized animals. The dinosaur most likely to eat you now. What many don't know is that most of the dominant carnivores were not tyrannosaurs that had yet to evolve, but rather the Allosaurus was the most abundant dino of all. This one had a striking appearance, which didn't make it any less fierce to its prey. It was known as an unstoppable predator that sported sharp razor-like teeth and a blood-inducing bite, allowing it to hunt a wide range of herbivores. Studies have suggested that it might have even hunted in packs, but whatever the case, it undeniably dominated the lands that represented 75% of all carnivores. The truth is, these numbers wouldn't be expected from a small creature, but no Allosaurus was a giant. However, they weighed an average of 1.7 tons, reaching up to 8.5 meters or the equivalent of 28 feet long, the largest land carnivore on Earth now. Let's talk about one of the greatest predators that existed, but surprisingly, it wasn't even the largest land predator. This one lived in North America. Additionally, its weight reached up to 5 tons, equivalent to almost 4 adult giraffes. The Allosaurus had a classification similar to its relative, the Saurophaganax. This incredible dino had robust arms and sharp claws, serrated teeth and distinct crests, but it differed in the shape of its vertebrae and obviously its body size. There are known to be five types of small herbivorous dinos that lived 150 million years ago. Among them are some common species, including the Dryosaurus, which was one of the smallest and the largest, like the Camptosaurus Dispar, which weighed around half a ton. Despite their size differences, they had similar diets composed of plants and herbs. Evolution of the Ankylosaurus The recent discovery of paleontological remains of an Ankylosaurus confirms the impressive digging ability of the species that lived during the Cretaceous period. Yong Nam Lee, an expert from Seoul National University in South Korea, highlighted that the individual found measured up to 6 meters in length. It is known that this species of dinosaur stood on four legs with short but heavy limbs for digging. The back, legs, and head were armored with wedge-shaped bony spikes known as osteoderms. Similarly, they had a club at the tip of their tail to protect themselves from predators. Currently, only four specimens with fairly complete body skeletons have been discovered. Other findings have been partial or incomplete. Victims of the passage of time and abrupt changes in the environment, dinosaurs in Africa and Europe, at this point the same trends seen in the Morrison Formation would still have to be followed, with many having counterparts worldwide, such as in Tanzania. This had a titanic giraffe. Additionally, Tanzania also saw animals like the Kentrosaurus and the Stegosaurus, fossils of which were found in Europe exactly crocodile-like reptiles. On the other hand, the late Jurassic harbored a wide range of species that were not dinosaurs, but they also imposed thanks to their strength and ability to attack prey. Among them were crocodiles, being the most dominant. The crocodile, like the dinosaurs, was present in different sizes and shapes, inhabiting a wide range of habitats. But generally, they were small, more like the size of a semi-aquatic caiman, hunting amphibian fish and turtles that lived nearby. But some actually were completely adapted to the land environment 
environment. On the other hand, we mentioned the known Jeepus. This was a small creature that rarely grew and was constantly attached to insects and other small prey. Likewise, the land crocs were also quite small, probably as a result of living in the shadow of dinosaurs and other predator groups that hunted them. So I hope you have learned more about one of the most inhospitable and hostile time periods that the Earth has ever seen. So I hope you do not try to travel in time to this point in history 150 million years ago, because if you step on the Earth at that time, I am sure that the imposing and ruthless dinos will turn you into their prey in just seconds. If you liked this video, support us with your wonderful like and subscribe to our channel for more videos of the prehistoric world.